G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video. I'm gonna go in the studio today and get some acrylic on the canvas. So let's get in there and get onto it. All right, thank you for joining me in the studio and welcome. Firstly, I want a big shout out, thank you to Sketchpedia for the inspiration behind today's picture. And I also want to get the size of my canvas and the colors going up the screen there for you, all right? And now I want to bring you over here and just show you what I've got sketched out on my canvas and what I can show you what you can paint today. So get over here and let's have fun together. Now I've got my horizon line pretty much halfway. It's right across the canvas, but in the painting, you're only gonna see about this much, okay? That's why I like to show these layouts. It's gonna be a distant mountain here, and I wanna show you how you can bring that, make it look and coming forward instead of looking flat. And we're gonna have some mid-ground and some foreground here and just some simple water. Now I was looking at the sky, because a lot of people ask me, do you use a reference picture? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And sometimes I do use a reference picture. I use part of it and a lot of my own thinking as well. And what I'm gonna do in this one is I wanna change the sky up a bit and probably give it just a bit of a setting sun instead of just a cold day. So I've got some colors down here ready to use. I wanna first grab some soft bodied titanium white just to prime in the sky area so the colors that I put on there can move and flow and blend together. So I wanna just get this pushed right into the canvas there, everywhere where my sky is going to be. Now I'm just gonna finish this off left and right like so. Now down here I've got my yellow ochre, I've got magenta, Quinacridone, magenta, Indian yellow, and Prussian blue. And these are good colors to get a setting sun in your sky. Now, I'm not gonna to need too much of the yellow ochre, but I'll get this right across the horizon, get it to about the height where I want the yellow to be. Okay, I'm wanting it about there, okay? And what's behind that mountain there? Any there? You might have a little bit of it there. Just getting it there. Now I'm picking up the Quinacridone magenta. Now this is a small area, so I'm only using a small brush. And I want to get this pretty much from there. Bring it up right across the sky there. Look, that light colour and that dark colour is where the paint's been pushed. That light colour means there's not much of the magenta on the tip of the brush now. And I can use this to start, see, pushing the two together crisscross it, stroke it left and right, bring it down into the yellow a bit, and you get a beautiful transition of the two colors. A little bit of warmth here. Now you might want to get a bit of darkness there if you want to. If you do, just pick up some more, put it on there, and then start splicing that into it. Don't go down anywhere where you've already did the blending. Now I'll just fade that up there a bit more, just a bit more. Now I've never done this before, but I'm gonna try Prussian blue as me blue in the sky. See how it goes. So we'll get this starting from the top and bring it down to the magenta. Simply all the way across here. Now it's, the white on the canvas has lightened it a bit, which is fine. So what I'm gonna do is get that there. Now I'm gonna wipe that off there, pick up some more of that heavier color and go again. Now I wanna, get that spliced into the magenta. So I'll gradually slice it down using the tip of my brush here and get those two colors married together as well. Now you can put clouds in this sky or you can leave it cloudless, totally up to you. Picking up some of that beautiful Indian yellow now and we're gonna sit that over the yellow ochre down the bottom there. So pretty much come along here and intensify that yellow ochre, just there like that, not too much of it, get it on there. Now I'm gonna wipe some of that off, I've got quite a bit on there, just so as I can thin it down and slice it up, getting it up there, maybe just a littlest bit in here, and it's just slightly dancing over the magenta as well, just slightly, that way we've got no greens in our sky. I'm just going to put some cloud activity in the sky just for those people who would like to have clouds in their sky and I'll show you what I would, with a mountain like this, I'm just going to simply use my fan brush, just a small one. And I know my mountain's going to be here so I'll kind of come from, uh, let's say here, 
and I'll zigzag and wedge it up there, turn my brush around and get some of this just like that. So I've kind of wedged it up, giving the illusion that the cloud's not flat on our painting now, it's kind of looking that way. Grabbing yourself a blending brush and a cloth and I'm going to simply drag the bottom of it. It'll mix with those sky colours a bit. My sky should be still wet. Just getting the bottom like that. I want to get this one a bit straighter. There we go. And now I just want to blend the tops to get rid of that weird brush. Look, and look at that getting beautiful smear. I like that little heavy window there, so I'm going to leave it. As you're doing this smearing and blending, you might see things that happen. And when you see things that are happening and you feel like they're turning into absolute bullshit, you leave it alone. We want to get the sun down there. I've got a small pounce, so I'm just going to load it up with this paint. But what I like the pounces for is let's say here, I'll put it about here. I want to get me sun in there, but it's quite heavy. So what I want to do is just hopefully my paint's still wet. Make sure your paint's still wet when you do this. I just want to blend out and create some glare. Now that glare is quite <clears throat> on there. So what I'm going to do is grab a smaller blending brush just so as I can sit the edge of that glare down now. Watch what I do. I'm going to sit it into that yellow. Wipe it as I go. Now the paint's pretty dry. I'm putting no retarder in it, so I don't have a big window to do this sort of stuff. Pick up some more white and get that glare where you want it. Just sitting that glare into your yellow there. Wipe the build up off your blending brush. It's always going to be picking it up. Now grab some more of the white paint. want to just put something here. So I've picked up some white paint and I just want to get something just very small coming right across the painting. I'm just going to use my finger to sit it down so it's not so hard and I want a bit higher here. So look what I'm doing here. I'm just going to show you. Watch. I put it on just softening it down with my finger. You can do this. And you know, do you want a third over here? Up to you. Right across, right across. Okay, simple, easy sky. I might just put something cascading out here off the painting, just quickly. Now my painting, I hope, isn't dry. No, it's, it's still a bit wet, so I've got time to softly sit that cloud. See what I've done? I've just put a base and then come from almost the middle, twist it and just pull it out up to the sky. That way this cloud will look like it's over our head. Oh, I pushed too much there. Now we can dry all this and get it ready for putting the mountains in there. Now I've dried that just to show you the difference from the picture I'm using. This is a picture from Free Pick by Sketchpedia. Now you can see there's the sky area over there, right? I've put my sky. That's a cool sky. I wanted a sunset sky. So now I'm going to put this mountain in here. I've left this mountain out. So I want to put just this mountain in here because I've got all my sun taking up the sky there. And you mix and change things up. So you'll just see from this reference to my painting how you can change things. Now because this is a tutorial, I don't expect everybody to be able to draw. I've just gone and scratched the top of my mountain in again. See I've left some of the sky undone here, so I've got to, that's why my mountains come out here with a bit of a shoulder to cover up the sky I didn't paint. And I've just cased in the sky now with my mountain. Now I've got some burn umber and my Prussian blue over here, so I've dampened a little flat brush here. Now just remember we're painting in acrylic so don't get caught trying to knife it on the way the oil artists do. We do it a bit differently. Well I certainly do anyway. So I've got some of me Prussian blue and I want to 
get me burnt umber now and mix that together to get a nice dark base for me mountain. So I simply get the point there, just make it like anything like this, watch. Come to my foreground mountain there, just like that. I've got the reference pick to give me some idea how I can do this. I'm gonna go a bit beyond that line just so I can create some distance with the two. And now with acrylic, you can dry this. What I might do is this side here, cause this is gonna be mountain coming forward. I might get some of this just in the distance as well. So I'm just gonna come up there like so, get it right off the painting there and just have something behind this mid-ground mountain that I'm going to do later. Now stick around to the end because there's going to be an exciting reveal at the end of this painting. So hopefully you can stick around for that. Now I'm going to dry all this. Okay, I'm just going to wipe that brush and grab some of the Prussian blue here with some of that. Get some of that and mix with your Prussian blue and get some white and keep looking at it, you want, that's too blue, I wanted a bit more of this brownie blue, if you know what I mean. Now remember how I said you draw a ziggly line there? This, get right to the edge there. And I wanna just create, I want it to come down like that. And get all this side just scratched in any old way. Just get it to the edge of that dark side of the mountain though and just start scratching it in. Now here I don't want that to come down to nothing. I want it to look like the mountain's still coming so we're going to have probably a bit of another peak and a gully there just like so. So I'm just kind of mountainizing the side of this mountain now with the different color there. I like that word, Ian, mountainize. Where'd you get that from? It's a big word. It's just because I'm doing the mountain, so mountainize the mountain. Okay. Okay, I've done that. Now what I would like to do, I can give that a bit of a dry. I'd like to get a little bit of white in there. I'm gonna grab some more of the white and just get some of this a little bit brighter, but not too bright. Do it too bright, you'll you'll muck it. Because I'm looking at the reference picture mountain where it's got the dark side and it has little bits of, um, you know, so let's see if I can, and I just want slight coming from here, just slight ridges. Look at this, you can do this, really you can. I've turned the light meter up, so hopefully, and I'm gonna get a bit of distant light glare between here, and when I put the next mountain on, I'm just using my finger to pat it down. That's why you see me putting my finger there. It's very wet still. Save your colors. I'm just misting them a bit as I go because I need to put them where I need them, just in my water here, and I don't wanna to have to try and mix up more. That's why I'm saving my colors. Now I simply just want to highlight this side using my burn umber. Pull some of that over here and a little bit of white. I'm using a flat brush simply because I feel I can use it like a knife ridge, get things done. Now I want to come from the, this side of the mountain and I just want to come from that ridge now and just kind of ridulate your mountain pushing. Now that color I just used, I want to grab some white now and get a brighter value of that and just scratch in some brighter gullies and valleys, and gussets. Just 
get in the corner of the brush trying to control get some of this hazing up there get the light from the sun's going to be gleaming on that bit there I'm looking, I'm not quite happy with this bit here because the reference picture, I'm going back to front to it. I've done it back to front here as well. So what I'm going to have to do is just kind of, I'll get that bluey, get the dark colour and just, I'm just going to try and get rid of that. Now that's why I say watch the video. You don't have to do this. You can just bring it down to where I'm bringing it to now. Should have went this way. So like I said, I saved all my paint colours. I've gotten that bluey colour now, I'm just putting it back. I've dried the painting. Get that back in there. So I pretty much made a mistake and showed you how I fixed it up. So now when you watch the video and you start, you do yours this way from the word go, instead of making a mistake like the guru did. Okay, just grabbing the lighter colour from over here again and fixing this up as well. So from that ridge there, I need to kind of get my paint mixed on my brush and come down from there just to give it, there we go. Okay, that's fine, but now look at this side of the mountain. It's, it's all bland. What we're going to do now is put some colour in the here using the yellow ochre and the green oxide. And this is going to make a very pale undergrowth dead vibe of green. Let's say from about here. This is sitting on the dirt. So all that brown that we just put there is the dirt. We just gingerly getting some of this on an, using the straight brush, the flat brush, just to knife it down the mountain here from the ridge. Wow, listen to that plane, Ian. Yeah, I know, mate. You love your bloody planes, don't you? Picking up some of the yellow be green a bit more just as a highlight just to get rid of there we go it's up to you how detailed you make all this scoot some of this brighter in here in here just because I want to coming up the mountain Just pull through a little bit of extra yellow ochre into that. Just so as you can get a bit more of a glare here around where the sun is. Just pulling that extra yellow ochre into that green oxide colour, just so as I can get highlighter bits up in here where I feel I want them. Grabbing some titanium white and I want the hint of Prussian blue in it. So it's tainted with that Prussian blue and that'll be some white. I just want to get onto the mountain there just as some snow. Just come from the very top and let some of this just filter down. Find 
find a, a rhythm with your brush where you can get it to do that scratching up vibe and bits of it are have a look at that, yeah that pretty solid there and then bits of it can be broken up as you're coming down it's going to get less Now see this ridge, that will be collecting a little bit of snow so you can kind of filter off your ridge there and just gingerly let it splice down all the rocks and business there, just on this peak as well. Now I've put just an extra bit of Blew into it just to get some on this side, filtering down as well. Because you don't want just one, the snow doesn't fall on just one side of the mountain. And we're kind of creating a shadowy vibe of the snow there. I'm just going to mess up where they're joining so it doesn't look too much of a line. Just a bit of something there. Some can be gully and down there. All right. I've got hardly any on my brush. This darker vibe of the snow, I'm just gingerly, gingerly, just getting some of it softly out here, very lightly just scratching. I feel I just want that there. Now with this, and this foreground, we're coming to the horizon line to put them in. But before we put them in, we need the water now. So when we put that on, we can put some reflections in. Simply grabbing that soft body titanium white, again, just to prime in the water area. Now I'm not gonna do the very foreground here because there's gonna be some land there. So I'll just get this to about there. Now, because I have a sun setting sky, I need to get those colours into the water first before I put my land mass. I'm simply going to grab the colours from the sky. We've got a bit of land here, so this can go all the way from about here. But mind you, the sky is going to, the water is going to have a bit of glare in it as well. So that's going to go from about there, just like that. Now I want to pick up the magenta. I'm just picking it up getting some of that across there. Just get those values into the water. Going left and right. Coming right across the painting. Don't forget to come right across. And now, grabbing the Prussian blue on my brush, I've got that foreground land there, so, and this is gonna come from about here, and this can merge into that magenta bit grey, it doesn't matter, it's water, it's distorted. We've just got the vibes of it there. So my water's wet. To control the Indian yellow, I'm just going to stamp it on roughly in this area. Just like that. See how I stamp that on? And I want that to glare. There we go. The brush isn't wet and I want to just slowly now waterfy that yellow. There we go, done. Too easy, you can do it. Simply grab some white, and we've got a bit of a resemblance here. Just put it there, just put that there. Wipe it off, because your water's still wet, and just waterfy that. There we go. I'm grabbing my thicker titanium white in my pouncer. It's where my sun is. Now, let's see how wet my water is. Now, that's it, don't muck with that too much. Get yourself a nice flat brush, just something you can do this to. I know it might, might, might need more paint on my, so I'm gonna load my flat brush up. Now, my water's still wet, I might have to dry it, but we need to just splice this out now into the water because the higher your 
moon or your sun is, the glare you get on the water is a bit spaded out. The closer it is, the more defined of a line this reflection in the water is. So have a look at photos or when you're down at the beach or when you see the sun shining on a lake, just how much the glare radiates out. I mean, you can even flick this with the toothbrush. Get that shimmer going. And for those who want to know what I mean, grab your toothbrush into some water, grab the soft flow white paint, and just load the tip of your toothbrush up. And we can concentrate. Watch what this stuff does. Get it really concentrated out here. And like all that brushing that I'd done, is pretty much underpainted for these to stick out more. And this just adds beautiful shimmer in your lakes, on your ocean, into wet sand, all sorts of business like that. And that can radiate out the way it will from a high light source into the sky reflecting into the water. Now it's simply gonna put these two mid-ground areas in. One's gonna go there and the other one's going to sort of go like that so it looks like the water's going around with some distance i'm just going to grab me brown burn umber and that prussian blue again just to mix up a dark and this is going to come in front there now just in front of here coming scooping right up now remember i put that light color paint there before i don't want to cover that up i want to leave that so i'm just going to wiggle my brush control how I go and get this coming up the painting and right off like that. So I'm just going to get this because it's a bit closer you might see shapes of treetops there somewhere. I'm just coming in front of that and this is going to come a little bit lower than the horizon. So, so I'll use my stick here. Now this one is pretty much coming all the way there, just join it up like that and get this, the bottom where it's gonna go, right across there like so. And then the other one is gonna come down. Pretty much there. And then come across here. I'll get rid of my stick so you can see what's happening. Now with this one here, grab your filbert again, and I want to do a distorted, so I'm going to come from about here. There we go. And I want to pull that down just so it's scratchy. There we go. Then I can block that in to the mountain there. I've controlled the edge of my reflection to there. Pulling it down, just so it's scratchy. Blocking that in. Now I've dried that with this one here, this color, I wanna get a little bit of white, just mixed with it here. I need a bit more though. Because what I wanna do is just kind of get me a slight hint of some trees out there just like this, but leaving a lot of it dark. And what I want to do, as I come down to the bottom, I want to kind of just fork it down, just so as I can get some beautiful subtle lawn. So I'll probably bring this to about maybe there-ish. And then I'm gonna kind of watch this. I'll put a spike there, spike there. Something there, because I just want lawn coming right up this. I did just turn the light up a bit, just so you can see what's going on. In real life you can see it, but sometimes the camera plays tricks on us. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more white into that now. Come from off the painting. Just to sit this in front of the one behind it. 
little bit there just filtering just filtering I'm grabbing the green oxide and a little bit of hookers just a little bit just to give it a bit of depth so it's not too loud and we simply want to come from the bottom and trace this up into some beautiful lawn there so I'll show you use your your stick get this right out here that's where the lawn's going to start get it right at the bottom of that dark color come along here so I've got some dark shine there so I've got to hide it and this stick just helps you keep that straight now from about here there's going to be another thing in front of that so I'll just go there anyway now what I want to do is gingerly get this coming up there Pulling it up, I want to pull it up the mountain. Watch, pull it up, get this one coming up there. So see how I brought these down like that? This is gingerly going to fit right up in the guts of them there like so. And just let it scratch away. And at the end of the day, your scratch aways look amazing. Okay, now we'll just simply highlight some of that. Now I've mixed up some of the green oxide with some yellow ochre. Just so this very little bit here, see how we've got this? I want to just get a nice bright glare there. Now getting some of the green oxide on its own. Gingerly highlight some of that stuff. Coming up there like so. And I'm even going to get a, the littlest bit of white in some of that now, just the smallest amount, and just where I feel, somewhere here, I'm just going to stamp it on. It's going up. Just creating some kind of vibe of lawn and bank out there. Now just so it makes sense and not too floaty, grab some of that blocked in colour we use for the mountain and just find the edge where it's meeting the water and just gradually scratch in a little bit of darkness there just to sit it down. Just like that. Just grab some more of the yellow oxide and a little bit of white because this here is just not glary enough. Just to sit behind the mountain there. Now just before we put this in, I want to get the glare on the water over here. I've picked up Prussian blue and I've mixed it with the white. I want to grab my bullshit stick and I want to come now with a flat brush, get this right against here first, nice and fine in here. That's why I haven't done that one yet, it's just so I can come from there. I want to come nice and fine, find my thickness. Now that dark line I'll put at the bottom of the green, make sure you don't cover that up. And we're coming in a straight line right across, keeping it straight and level makes your paintings look proper. Okay, we've got one there, maybe a little bit thicker here, and just let the bottom side of that line break away, scrumble away, you know, be all torn. So the brush can be dry and we can kind of make the bottom of that line a bit broken if I can. There we go, I got it. Nice and level. Right out there. It can break out there. These glares, getting them in your paintings, they just add so much more greatness to your work I feel and I'll probably put one more coming from here just about there from there and let it come a bit wider because it's closer and me sticks helping it stay level 
Now I've saved that glary paint because when I do my reflections, I just want to continue them over to sink the reflections. This is dry. I want that simple green lush trees there. So now I'm going to pick up me hooker's green and I'll start from the top. Don't start from the edge of your painting. Come off your painting and then start coming down. That way it's going to continue as a proper flow. Now with this, you just simply want to leave bits of that dark background colour there but the majority of it is going to be this color and you're going to go just beyond see here just beyond the dark so what i want to do now is start creating something bulging here but where the bottom is leave it dark you need the darks to create the depth underneath the bush now simply grab your filbert brush and transfer these colors into the reflection as well I better turn the light meter up so you can see it. It'll look a bit funny, but once I zoom back at the end, it'll be beautiful. And we just simply want to get these, leaving the dark bit against the horizon line there. And with your dark in the reflection here. I'll get them straight in. That's crooked as buggery, mate. Yeah, yeah I know. Just calm down just go beyond the dark color just beyond so you're putting it on and pulling it down so you've got lots of little dark pockets in there as well okay give this a dry and we're ready for the next color i've given it a dry and i've picked up my green oxide and i'm going to go the same again now i'm just going to go over this and gingerly Highlight that, filtering down, finding the shapes of my shrubs there, my trees, my foliage, whatever it is. Just green oxide. And now the same again, you want to just get this. Just... suggested in your reflections there give that a dry now I want to grab some of the Indian yellow and simply highlight that so it's going to create a yellow green color so I've given it a dry and let's just start seeing how this is filtering through Now, if you like what I'm doing on my videos here, give me the thumbs up and give me a comment. Say hello, tell me who you are, and I'll say hello back. Someone's banging outside here. What's going on out there? Look, little buddy, I don't know. If you want to run out there and have a look, you can find out. I'm busy. And the same again, just emulate some of this reflecting into the reflections as well just less someone must be renovating Now I've given the reflections a dry. I'm gonna grab me stick again and continue the, where are we? These glares just to sink back our reflections. There, this one's gonna come all the way. Right across there like that. right out there where's my I don't want too much of this there
Like I always like to do, where are we? I might just put something coming here, a bit of wind hitting it. I like doing these. There. And maybe just something filtering out here. I was gonna put a big grass mass of grass here, but I won't, I thought about it, but I won't. I'm just grabbing some lighter glare and filling this up with glare because the glare can excuse the fact that that far ground bit of land does not have a reflection because there's too much glare on the water to see it but the closer one we can see our glare or we can see our reflection and I've shaped these a bit differently I'm grabbing the burn umber and some black just to get a dark base coat for some lawn foreground and I simply the edge of it can be a bit you know hairy don't do it in a smooth sharp line like that and we're just going to simply follow our water but I want to slowly come up over here Okay, you blocked it in, give that a dry. Now I simply want my yellow ochre and my green oxide to create the colors for that foreground and then I'll just highlight it. So we're simply gonna come across the front of this, get beyond that dark stuff you just put there because if that dark stuff wasn't there, this stuff won't stand out. And we're going to scoot this in in a roundabout way. Leave it. I want the foreground down the bottom. I'm going to have that a little bit darker. Okay, now I'm grabbing the Indian yellow with what's in my brush just so I can highlight that front lawn there. Now from the edge, I just want to start getting this highlighted from the edge and just filter it through that other green there but leaving bits of dark there but keeping the edge this color I've dried that, I've grabbed a sharper flat brush and I've put a lot more yellow into that now. And I wanna just start making my lawn there with this sharp stuff, just tracing through, getting some lines there. It's more in focused. I've just added a little bit of white to that highlighter colour just so as I can differentiate different parts of this ground here. Finish it off like that. I want to sign this, then we'll reveal it and whack a frame on it. Now, thank you all my patrons and YouTube channel members who support my content. Much appreciated. I do try and urge others to, if they can support my channel and become a member or a patron. Become a member of my art group, Ianapolis Art Network. Links in the description below. Check out all the links.
there we go that's not too shabby is it we've got a beautiful sunset mountain scene now i was just looking at it i could probably get a bit of the yellow and skimp across here just kind of not too heavy just letting it be scratchy okay i know you can do it well that was exciting and i did enjoy that painting very much and a big thank you to etchpedia for the reference pick thank you very much and if you like what i'm doing you'd be sure to tell your friends but if you don't like what i'm doing you tell everybody also look at this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you